So, in the last module, uh, we had seen how a coherent receiver works and uh, earlier in dispersion compensation, I had already introduced you to how uh, dispersion can be compensated digitally. Now, in this module, we are going to see some more details of uh, the basic uh, dis digital signal processing that is uh, relevant for an optical communication system. Uh, mind you, this is not a full-fledged course on digital signal processing. So, uh, we are going to spend only uh, we are going to spend only uh, less than a week for this uh, basic digital signal processing. So, this is not completely exhaustive. This module just gives you an introduction to uh, the complexities of the digital signal processing that needs to be done so that the optical coherent communication system actually works in a seamless manner. Now, uh, if you remember, this is how our uh, transmission system looks like. So, you have uh, the data to be uh, encoded, uh, which in a laboratory environment will get generated in an arbitrary wave generator. So, this is the block diagram from our laboratory itself. So, the data which is encoded in bits uh, which are like 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, etcetera. So, they are loaded into the uh, I and the Q inputs of an IQ modulator. You have already seen the functionalities of an IQ modulator and uh, the IQ modulator is of course, driven by the optical transmitter uh, which is a laser diode of uh, narrow line width and this light propagates through the channel. So, as far as communication system uh, is concerned, uh, this is the channel. So, you start from uh, bits and from the bits it gets into modulation and it moves uh, towards this uh, moves to the uh, channel. Uh, the channel has uh, fiber and we know that fiber introduces impairments such as uh, chromatic dispersion, polarization mode dispersion, polarization mixing etcetera. And the channel also has uh, amplifiers and these amplifiers are going to add uh, noise into the system. So, you have noise and you have the other impairments uh, that gets added in the system and you have at the output you have the coherent receiver and from the receiver uh, you have already seen how you can extract the in phase and quadrature components corresponding to the x and y polarization and these uh, analog signals are now digitized. Uh, here uh, we are saying real time uh, oscilloscope, but the key functionality that we are using here is uh, analog to digital converter. So, from the receiver you basically have uh, you are feeding the output to the 4 channel uh, ADC and you have the bits coming out corresponding to the uh, X polarization and Y polarization. Of course, in the transmitter here I am showing only one polarization. If you had a polarization multiplex transmission, you have one more IQ modulator which is modulating the uh, this, this modulator may be modulating the X pole and this modulator uh, may be modulating the uh, uh, Y pole polarization and both are combined before it uh, is fed to the uh, channel. Now, the question is uh, there are several impairments uh, this signal is undergoing and uh, we know most of the course we spend in understanding what is the nature of these impairments so that we now know a clear way of um, compensating these. Okay. So, uh, one thing to be noticed is that uh, we cannot be compensating for noise. Whatever noise is added in the system that cannot be corrected. What can be corrected for? are uh, predictive uh, impairments such as chromatic dispersion or polarization dispersion and to a certain extent statistical impairments like uh, laser phase noise and so on. Okay. So, let us call the transmitted bits as x of n and the received bits as uh, y of n and uh, we are interested in trying to compare the transmitted bits uh, with the received bits. In the beginning of the course, uh, we have seen how the analog signal that needs to be transmitted gets uh, digitized and uh, you get a sequence of bits that needs to be transmitted. Now, these bit, se bit sequences get mapped into symbols, they get mapped into different polarizations, get transmitted through the channel and the 4 channel analog uh, to digital converter, the output of that we get all the sequences corresponding to the in phase quadrature component at the 2 polarizations and finally, you are sequencing them back into the bit stream. So, at the end of the day, you have a bit stream that you need to transmit and you have a bit stream that you have received. 
and you quantify the performance of the link through the bit error rate and through Q square. Now, the bit error rate is uh, simply a comparison of uh, the ratio of the error bits, number of bits in error to the total number of bits that you transmitted. Now, uh, the question is uh, before you do this uh, bit error rate calculation, uh, can you do some signal processing to uh, compensate for the impairments that are caused by the system? Okay. Now, that is possible if we can look at it as a uh, in as a block diagram like this, let us say x n is going through the system and out comes uh, y n and let us say that the impulse response of the system is h of n. Now, here we mean uh, the system as the entire transmission system. So, this will include all the impairments also. Now, this uh, way to represent the system uh, response in uh, is either through uh, impulse response in the time domain or through uh, frequency response in the uh, frequency domain of course. So, uh, depending on the uh, type of impairment you would like to convert this signal into the frequency domain and uh, multiply with the inverse of the frequency response which is what we did for dispersion compensation and then we get back to the uh, time domain and so on. But as far as the digital signal processing uh, processor is concerned. Uh, these are just uh, samples okay? and uh, the way the, uh, the assumption by which all this uh, DSP algorithms that we are talking about is going to work only if the channel can be modeled as a linear time invariant channel. So, the channel is modeled as a linear time invariant uh, system so that you can uh, bring in this idea of impulse response and frequency response. Uh, otherwise, the concept of impulse response and frequency response does not hold good and uh, you also want the channel to be an invertible channel. Okay? Now, when we say channel now, what are the different sources of uh, errors that are introduced in the channel and what are we correcting for? So, the primary sources of impairments are those first of all provided by the transmitter lasers and the receiver lasers and the channel itself. Now, what does a transmitter and the receiver do? Now, you remember your module on lasers, we talked about it uh, during uh, the discussion on laser sources. We said that the uh, one of the uh, key parameter or key performance index of a laser is the line width of the laser and it is important because the line width of the laser, the finite line width of the laser contributes for a phase noise and a phase noise. Uh, would cause a major impairment as far as a coherent communication system is concerned. So, let us consider a QPSK constellation where you have the four constellation points that need to be transmitted and in the presence of uh, phase noise this is how the constellation gets uh, smeared and the job is to which will compensate for the phase noise that is introduced by the laser. The other compensation that we need to do is the frequency offset. Now, we will talk about frequency offset in detail, but in we have already talked about it when we were talking about coherent receiver. So, in a coherent receiver, you have a local oscillator laser which is beating with your incoming signal to generate a signal that is of your interest which is from where you are getting your in phase and quadrature component, but there is always a IF frequency that is present in the system and that IF frequency can cause an impairment like this and uh, as far as a channel is concerned, we know that the chromatic dispersion will create an intersymbol interference and that will uh, completely smear your constellation. Your polarization mixing will uh, also cause a uh, mixing of uh, data between the x and y polarization and this coupled with the fact that the two polarizations are not propagating at the same speed will result in ISI plus a polarization mixing and of course, we have also, also seen the nonlinear effects in detail. So, these are the uh, systems that we are trying to uh, think of. So, you can think of the entire communication system as a cascade of systems and you can independently say that you know uh, the functionality that the frequency offset uh, functionality is a system and so we need to invert that system. So, you can think of the entire communication link as a cascade of such 
small systems and you know the behavior of such small systems and what is the consequence of having a frequency offset or what is the consequence of having a phase noise. So, you write down the impulse response or frequency response as the case uh, is easier for you. Uh, you write down the uh, impulse response or frequency response of each of these subsystems and you now say that my x of n is experiencing uh, a h 1 of uh, n another system whose impulse response is h 2 of n etcetera until uh, let us say h n of n where n will now be this capital N I am talking about frequency as response as one of the system phase noise is this uh, chromatic dispersion is third and so on and ultimately you get your y of n. Now, to get back to your uh, x of n all what you need to do is to keep inverting these systems or designing filters such that these functionalities are inverted. Now, let us see one by one. So, I am going to give a case study here we are trying to uh, take a uh, uh, give you uh, a exercise also later on writing down uh, in fact on generating some of these impairments and then compensating for it. So, in case of a uh, uh, actual transmission system all these compensations that we are talking about have to be done uh, at a scale which is uh, really really fast. So, that there is no latency involved in all of these processes and uh, these uh, signal processing is done on the digitized samples at the output of the ADC. Uh, the sequence of implementation of these filters are very critical. We've